by the grace of Christ. Let's go, let's go to chapter 32, Deuteronomy, chapter 2. Chapter 32 from Deuteronomy. Excuse me, it's chapter 34, 34 in Deuteronomy. Then Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead as far as land down, or Naphtali, the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, all the land of Judah, as far as the western sea, the south, the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zor. Then the Lord said to him, This is the land which I swore to give Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have caused you to see with your eyes which shall not cross over there. <clears throat> so Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. And he buried him in the valley of the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his grave to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not as dim as n nor his natural vigor diminished. And children of Israel went and wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses ending. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel hid in him as did the Lord had commanded Moses. But since then there hasn't been in Israel a prophet like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face in all the signs and wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt before Pharaoh, before his servants in all his land, by all that mighty power and all the great terror which Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Amen. Moses indeed is a special man unique in the Old Testament it's the he's the man that got entrusted with a great work and once he trained him the first 40 years with with very uh, with a pleasing discipline but the latter 40 years and the work of God the last 40 years so in order for Moses to work in the work of God and fulfill the work of God 80 years were re required in Egypt he met all he uh, uh, wisdom of this world and in the land of Midian and Moab uh, found out about loneliness, isolation, and that all consistent of his and contributed to his development and training. Uh, so, and he decided not to be named the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. And he decided to leave Egypt, not because he feared uh, Pharaoh. But because of faith, he had a revelation. He had a revelation from the beginning that God had decided with them to set free the people of Israel from Egypt. Years went by. And what God had revealed to him It was, it was forgotten. And, and as a result of his reactions that were due to faith, he found himself in the dreadful condition, 40 years to pass to the sheep of his uh, father-in-law. Despair. But God uh, 
when he found Moses in absolute weakness, he used him. That's the secret of God. This is how God works. Apostle Paul understood this principle. And when Apostle Paul was in absolute was in absolute weakness, he made a decision. He made a decision of death. I don't care about anything. The only thing I care is to walk on the direction of the Holy Spirit. And, and even though his first three tr uh, missionary trips were uh, with great difficulty, Paul confessed at the end, I kept the good faith, I finished my race. Nothing remains for me but to receive the crown of righteousness. So Moses, according to the, according to the plan of God, he worked. But in the end, he failed as, as at the end of his ministry. He disappointed God. My God, he disappointed God. When he asked him to order for the rock to put out water, when the Israelites went were um were asking for water Moses using his experience and because he was doing everything with his rod he knocked on the rock uh, and nothing came out the first time but then he hit the rock again and he didn't enter the land the promised land because he knocked the rock twice but God being good he helped him out, at least, to see. And his vision was always good to the end. Helped him to, to go up to the top of Pisgah, which is across from Jericho, and to walk, see the land of the Promised Land. The mercy of the Lord. He didn't praise me. Because he didn't obey me. He didn't do exactly what he asked to do. Because that's where, where Christ is glorified. <clears throat> and this is the uh, humility of Christ. He became obedient to God in all ways till death and death of the cross but Moses did not humble himself and he didn't obey but that doesn't mean that God did not bless him that God did not know this yeah. that God could not help him out That, uh, but in the end, it's what happened with God. God would have helped him, not for Moses to some point, God, but it's really the end of what God wanted. What did God want? For Moses to become the um, a model or a type of one of those two people, or the one of the Lord Jesus Christ. As here, uh, oh, it's his disciples. Who do the people say the Son of Man is? And uh, Peter confessed, You are the Son of the Living God. And once he described to them his, uh, his end, uh, well, the Lord Jesus, when he described his martyrdom, he, 
he brought James, John, and Peter to the Mount of Transfiguration, and he was transfigured, and the face of the Lord Jesus shone as the face of the sun, and his garment shone with that brightness of the sun, and his three disciples saw along with Moses and Elijah and they would see Moses and Elijah speaking with them and indeed and they were speaking or conversing about the future death that Jesus was going to go through and Moses and Elijah knew uh, that Jesus was only those two knew he was the son of the living God he was sent in order to die. Why did they know those two? Because they had not failed. I felt the life in Hades. When Moses passed away, Jude, in his epistle, um, reveals that the Archangel Michael of the Lord of Hosts contended with a devil in order to receive the body of of Moses and he received it not because because he could overcome him but because he said he said the Lord rebuke you they all the Almighty God may he rebuke you and the Satan could not keep the body of Moses as in the uh, the gathering of the saints he's not going to be able to prevent the stop that event taking place and he doesn't desire the salvation of people and what's important for us today Now, uh, the friends of m the second, the second phase, the second person, which is more important for us, is Moses. Oh, actually, Elijah, the prophet that God used gloriously. It's not a topic today. We're not going to get into details. We would always walk with the dire under the direction, guys, the Holy Spirit. When you started saying, I want to see. When he sent him one place or another. They failed. And when Mo, uh, Elijah prayed, God now the painful days are going to come for Elijah when Jezebel decides to take the life of Elijah and for strange enough he feared for his life and he left the presence of God he went and hid himself he said let me die he despaired to live just like Paul later who Elijah whose name meant in the God is my own God the one that God used so Ad, um, um, uh, admirably now he will him with the superpower to run ahead of the chariot of Ahab was the one who was intimidated by Jezebel he was a full of weakness he was isolated, just like Moses. He hid himself in a cave, and he said, let me die here. But God 
God allowed this and God is gonna set him free it's something very special to perform with Elijah and then a, uh, a gentle breeze revealed the presence of God and he asked him what are you doing here Elijah get up because the time has come f for me to use you in my work that's what he did with uh, Moses too and to Elijah he said you're gonna anoint Jehu um, the replacement it's strange but it's true that God uses his glory when a person makes it to absolute weakness Apostle Paul says I boast in my weakness when I'm weak then God is strong in me let me tell you something that's true church right now is in absolute weakness cannot do anything it is in absolute weakness just like Moses was just like just like Moses and Elijah But God asked Elijah and Moses, get up. God had prepared to become the model or the type of the rapture of the church. When the time came, because God revealed them, he knew and not only that, and other prophets knew that. He knew that God was going to come receive him. Elisha knew that, knew that too. And God led the steps of Elijah toward his to receive him up. <coughs> and he knew in detail, well Elijah knew in detail where he needed to go. God had revealed to him in detail how he's gonna rapture Elijah up to heaven. God had not informed Moses. The rapture of the church in case of uh, Moses did not know. But Elijah knew in detail. Now I'm going ahead in in the world well God he did not just uh, now the how and when who's gonna lift him up to receive him to heaven and from the area where he was he made all the way to Jordan to find himself with the praise of God he started with uh, with the attitude of dedication, knowing his end, knowing that knowing that God was gonna snatch him up, and and his devotion to God was personal. And uh, there is a devotion, there is family and church. Now, dedication and devotion to God is a personal matter. It's the beginning of the end of the glory. Uh, the end that is. And he made all the way to Bethel. And once he made it to Bethel, and then the sons of the prophets, once they made it, 
one of the stations that Elijah went through, they informed, uh, they would say to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your mask from over here today? He said, yes, I know, keep silent. And Eli uh, Elijah started this course from Gilgal, which means dedication or devotion, because uh, the end, the good Christian end, starts with devotion. And our lives need to be a fragrance to God in order to cross Jordan. At that time, you cannot do that. You have to to be you have to be placed in the gun to those who are being perishing and those who are saved. This is the course of the person who is going to be raptured. Uh, devotion, the house of God, and be the fragrance of God. The fragrance of God, of Christ to God. To others, the fragrance of death. But those who have been saved is the fragrance of life. He made it all the way to Jordan. Uh, only Elisha drew near. Only servant of God drew near. I'm not going to leave you. You know, dear brethren, the Lord Jesus Christ, with the rapture, he's leaving. He doesn't appear to you on the earth again. There's no more communion anymore. He doesn't baptize the Holy Spirit anymore. Because he leaves with the church. The work of God complete. The New Testament complete. In the heaven of the book, the word of God is going to be open in heaven. Elisha didn't know. I'm going to be with you. He, rem he removed his and he took his Elijah took his mantle rolled it up, struck the water and Jordan was divided this way and, and the waters were piled and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And when they crossed, and Elijah started walking toward the place that God had revealed to him, at the time that God had revealed to him, was going to receive him. Elisha next to him. This is very important element Elijah's life things are near and completion when Jesus comes down on earth he's going to be a king <clears throat> and God when, when God showed that to me in this image we are we are in this image we are Elisha and Elijah is Christ Ask, what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you? What, Elijah is going to perform this for Elisha? Ask, what I may do for you, and I'll do it. Only Christ can say this. Elijah was in absolute conviction and spiritual confidence. He was at the point of perfection. He was at the end of his end. Remember how he started from Gilgal with devotion. Because Gilgal means devotion. He was a fragrance of Christ as well. 
which is which is what Bethel means, and then a steadfast decision of death that he made. Elijah is never going to cross Jordan back. Elisha says, "Ask what may I do for you before I'm taken away from you." This is Second Kings, verse nine. And as and Elisha admired the power of God in Elijah, even though Elijah had experienced the weakness of God, and he needed strength in order to walk in the will of God after he would return from the Jordan River. And Elijah said, "You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taking to." from you it shall be so for you but if not it shall not be so then it happened as they continued all and talked suddenly the chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven <clears throat> he's the type all the people, the rapture of the church on that day. Just like with James, John, and Peter. Two special people. Mo um, who are living, Moses and Elijah, are living before God. In Enoch too, but he was before the flood, before Noah, two people like us, the presence of God. And we don't know if they have a new body. God does not reveal to us what kind of life they have. Because the only one who is resurrected firstborn among the dead is Christ but they're living they're a type a symbol for us Elijah and Moses and of course it is of great interest the failure of Moses because he did not enter the promised land but he saw since he had the power to um, ascend um, to the top of Mount Miska. Now, in the case of uh, Elijah, there was fear. There was uh, he was intimidated, but there was not there was no blemish in his ministry, like in the case of Moses. Let's come now to ourselves. I don't think there is no one among us who can say that there was no blemish in our ministry. But we thank the Lord. God paid for our sins. The Son of the Living God paid for them. He died. Been over there. He lifted up all the sins of humankind. As long as a person surrenders their sins, Christ will forgive them. Of course, we're going to make mistakes. Of course, we're going to fall. Of course, we're going to come into weakness. But we know, believe the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all our sins when we are being filled in the Holy Spirit when it's been filled with the love of God the Father because the bond of perfection with the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ this bond of perfection in the Old Testament Elijah and Elisha. This bond perfection 
united you and I with Christ Christ is the Lord and our God thus we love him with all our heart soul and spirit and intellect but only only when we're filled with the Holy Spirit we love him like that only then we're connecting with the uh, bond of perfection only with the bond of perfection and so God the Father left resurrected him and then I my father one of the Lord Jesus Christ he's praying Father love others as I love you dear brethren I would dare to say this is a unique revelation the bond of perfection which is love it's a special revelation it's a unique precondition to participate in the rapture of the church the f the five f um, the foolish ver uh, maids who were foolish they had a lamp uh, but they were not burning without the Holy Spirit they cannot be transfigured without the Holy Spirit the Lord will never resurrect everything in our lives and the church is the Holy Spirit this is the Word of God everything is about the Holy Spirit in our lives this is what the Word of God reveals to this is what leads us it's gonna how do Elijah, Elisha, no he's gonna go from Gilgal to Bethel he's gonna go to Jericho and then he's gonna cross Jordan and then God will come to receive him through the Holy Spirit he knew all these things and the Holy Spirit God received them the, the message today all through the Holy Spirit we're gonna be able to make it to the end only through the Holy Spirit there is no other way only through the Holy Spirit and when they say this is another bro when God showed to Zechariah Do you know what this is? I don't know what that is. He then told him this is a uh, the great secret. Not, not by power of mind, but not through my Holy Spirit. There's going to be this lamp. This was in Zechariah. They're going to be able to enter this lamp, which is no other than the Church of Christ. There are many lamps. Bronze, silver, but one was they received the oil from the olive oil. Mm, I hope God. We are in great weakness may come even greater weakness we don't really know nobody knows but now we're living uh, we're in conditions where nobody uh, would have imagined the Holy Spirit two years ago told us about the church the churches are gonna shut down by my word the word of God uh, will continue be proclaimed I can't say that I despise the prophecy and I, I 
I fear to despise prophets and prophecies, but that prophecies but seemed strange to me because my person I never like despise prophets and prophecies because my convictions and values never and it happened it was fulfilled today we are very few absolute weakness when I'm um, I'm concerned that upon this weakness is going to be another weakness may God preserve us but what matters God showed me within his church our main duty is to have no one who is needful this is our mission or weakness to search out for God to reveal to us because the church your mission is to have no one who is needful and doesn't mean just poor he's weak faint despair and despair to that to which we're devoted to amplify the weak ones and the ones who are ready to fall away from faith we need to strengthen them I shouldn't be anyone in the church who is famished even the weakness of the church shouldn't be in the church uh, nobody who should say nobody's interested about me let me understand this is my mission this is your mission this is my work and your work to wait to wait for the Lord to come and receive us all of us may the Lord preserve us 